The southeastern region of the state of Kansas consists of a large network of small rural communities. Most towns here have a population under 1,000, relying on the occasional larger town for certain amenities and work. In general, these communities are almost entirely residential and somewhat isolated. From an outside perspective, one might wonder, why do people choose to live here? I grew up in a much bigger community um, where I didn't know hardly anybody. Um, so I really like the close-knit community. Everybody knows everybody. Um, neighbors are able to help neighbors out, um, things like that. I like the smaller school size, smaller class size, smaller community overall. It's just a nice place to live where you're not exactly out in the country, but you're also not in a big town. I like the lifestyle of living in the rural area. I don't want to live in the city. I don't want to be around a lot of humans. I, I like having the open space. I like to hunt. I like to just generally not see people. <laughs> the residents of these communities value the small town life. There are a few staples of any small functioning community in these parts. Church, post office, city hall, maybe a bar or gas station, and most importantly, a school. Schools tend to be the center point of the community, as well as the source of jobs. Formed out of a number of existing school districts in the early 60s, Unified School District 247, which consists of Southeast High School, Southeast Middle School, and Southeast Elementary, is one such center point. I'm considered the Chief Executive Officer for the district. Um, I do a lot of things, but I see my, my job, my main role is service to others. We have a unique district, and uh, we're a small school, but we're spread out over 300 square miles. And within that, we have several communities that feed into our schools. We have Cherokee, we have Weir, and we have McCune, and also West Mineral. Um, we also have some small communities outside of our district that uh, we receive a lot of students from too. Uh, and that's from the, the Scammon area and up around the Chicopee area near Pittsburgh. Um, the other thing that's kind of unique about our district is that we're not just in one county. Uh, we're, we have actually have ground in Crawford County, which is most of it is in Crawford County and Cherokee County and um, a little piece in Neosho County and some in Labette County. The city of Weir is definitely very fortunate to have a school. Um, a lot of the smaller communities around Southeast Kansas have lost their home schools. So we have been able to keep our elementary school. Granted, over time it has kind of phased itself out from what was a high school to begin with, to what was in an elementary school and junior high, and to, right now it is just an elementary school. But um, we're fortunate to have that, so anything we can do as a city to partner with them and vice versa, then partner with us in order to keep that um, relationship strong and to allow um, the city to provide resources to them um, any way that they need. My son is in for, or kindergarten and my daughter is in fourth grade. It's very, um, very convenient that it's just down the road. Um, we can drop them off on our way to work and things like that. So very, very important. My daughter Quincy is in the fourth grade. My daughter Chloe is in the first grade. I think that having to drive some to get to the school is a, is a lifestyle choice. Um, everything about the school is a lifestyle choice. I don't have any desire to ever live in the city, and our district is spread out as a result of serving a rural community, and that's what I prefer, so it doesn't bother me. But I also don't live on the outskirts like some of the people, some of the others do. If you live on one extreme end or something like that, it could be more difficult. I love the students at Southeast. Um, I've had great experiences with them. I would say a lot of them come from unique backgrounds and that makes our school unique. Um, even though we don't have a big community with a lot of powerful businesses and stuff like that, the community supports the school and that's what's most important. The school is the heart of the community, and in recent years it has experienced a major threat to its survival. In 2011, former Kansas Governor Sam Brownback began an initiative to make massive cuts to the state's education budget in favor of a school privatization policy called School Choice, which would allow parents to get vouchers to go to private schools near them. As a smaller school district, Southeast has been hit hard by these cuts. 
I would say Southeast is a small district that has gotten smaller and that is fighting to stay alive. A little over a year ago, we had to cut $750,000 out of our, our budget because of uh, budget cuts from the state. Um, and so when you're talking large amounts of money like that, um, you can't make that up by cutting down on the number of paper clips that you buy or the amount of paper that you buy. Those, those type of cuts uh, come at the cost of people's jobs. And so that's always a very big blow to a community and to a school. Um, for us, we've had the challenge, uh, not only because there's been cuts, but part of the reason we've lost funding here is because we've had a reduction in enrollment that's occurred over the past several years. And the base state aid per pupil uh, is one of the main factors in how much state aid a school district gets. And when your number of kids go down, number of students go down, your amount of aid goes down. The number of kids at the school is significantly smaller than when I first got here. Uh, probably 10 years ago or so, when I was uh, helping coach basketball, at one point we were 4A, and at this point we're 2A. Um, and I think that's a result of the economy and just not having a lot of jobs available here, so people leave the area. What you have to be careful of is that when you start to become a smaller school, that you have to be willing to uh, reduce your staff to meet that. Um, and it's better to do that a little bit along as opposed to one big um, you know, lump at a time. The budget cuts don't affect my classroom as much as other classrooms because we're very reliant on grant money. And there's always grants available for technology um, because people see that as the future. But every teacher, every employee is expected to do more as we lose people. Um, as a parent, I've, I've had my kids come home crying because one of their teachers was cut, a teacher that they like. So as a parent, it's had more of an effect than it has as a teacher here. I think anytime if, um, you cut budget um, dollars for education, I think you're gonna see the impact on that. What I think you've seen, especially in this area, is families are so easily accessible to Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, and they've chosen to go over there instead. Um, granted, those states don't necessarily fund education more, but it provides a different opportunity in a town much bigger than what we can provide um, with maybe a little bit better public schools. So I think not only are you seeing that, but that you're also seeing um, kids not wanting to advance their education further by going to community college or a four-year institution because the price of that has increased so much, and that is also due um, to the legislature not putting money into higher ed. When money and enrollment reach a critical low point, schools can be shut down forever. The Southeast District has already seen the closure of two school buildings, West Mineral in 2004 and McCune in 2014. Both schools offered classes from kindergarten through eighth grade, much like the Weir and Cherokee buildings used to. But in the current configuration, Weir serves as the consolidated elementary and Cherokee serves as the consolidated middle school, while the high school has remained the same. Southeast is not the only district in the area that's faced closings. In 2011, Scammon Elementary School, part of USD 493, the Columbus District, was shut down, forcing its students and their families to look elsewhere for education and all of its employees to look elsewhere for jobs. Scammon is a small community. There's around 300 people. It was upsetting to me to have Scammon close for the fact that I've lived here my whole life. I went there. Um, I was hoping that my daughter could attend all the way through sixth grade. We had amazing teachers. Um, but it was, you know, unfortunate because that's where I worked and I would have just rathered her finish out at Scammon. When they decided to close the school, there had been a lot, lots of rumors about it, and so we attended a board meeting and asked them about it. They told us there was absolutely no plans to do so, but then just a few short months after that is when they started the process of closing it. We had a lot of meetings, board meetings, town meetings. Um, there was a large group of us that rallied, went door to door, contacted people trying to help prevent the closure of Scammon. Um, but once they, and when they were in the process, a lot of the parents got together, talked about where we wanted to go with our students. We didn't feel like going on to 493 inside Columbus was a good 
choice for us. So there was a large number of parents who had decided to take their kids and go to 247. I absolutely think it was a hindrance to Scammon to close the school. Um, we've lost a lot of people because, you know, they're going to have to travel to, to go to school. So a lot of people went ahead and just moved in and a lot of nice houses have come up for sale and it's almost impossible to sell our, it hurt our property value. It was actually a, a huge problem. Given the unrelenting budget cuts and the shrinking school size, the thought of the district being shut down in the future is not uncommon. But how likely is this event, and what would actually take place? Well, what you'll have is you'll, you'll have families that'll maybe look to go to another place. I mean, having a school is one of the essential things that um, young families look to, to build a family, to keep a family, and to establish roots. So if Weir isn't able to offer that to them, um, I have a feeling that they're going to look to other places that do have schools um, as a place to live and set up shop. So we would still live here. Um, but we would probably go to Pittsburgh schools. The teachers that have left here have all found um, jobs within about 30 minutes of here. Most of them have been able to keep the homes that they live in and stay in this area. If, if, if the district shut down, obviously I'd have to find a new job, but the reality of it is the students have to go somewhere and I have a lot of experience Wherever the kids would go, I would probably end up. But if need be, I would go find another job. I really feel like that that's not anything that's ever going to happen. Um, we, we, even though we're becoming a smaller school, we're not disappearing. There are a lot of schools, uh, several schools that are much smaller than us in Kansas. We're not even close to the bottom. We're probably more up towards the middle. And so the chances of this school disappearing and going away are slim to none, in my opinion. There are many different ways of looking at the current state of the district, both good and bad. The future of the school is the future of the community itself, and current forecasts seem to go somewhere down the middle. I think the future looks bright for Southeast. We are a smaller school than we were before, but uh, our enrollment's starting to level off. I feel like that we're ideally located. Uh, we're just a few minutes from Pittsburgh, not too far from, from Joplin, those bigger towns. So I feel like that our community and our district has a lot to offer people that may want a, a small school that's able to do a lot of things a small school can do, but also you have the luxury of some of those amenities of the bigger uh, communities nearby. So I believe that uh, if we could get some more housing in the district, that would make a big difference. Uh, I feel like there is a lack of of good affordable housing for people to move into. So if we could get something going in that area, I think that would be, be very helpful. And any other small businesses would, I think, contribute to that, that prosperity of the future as well. I feel like right now the school is strong. I, th I feel like our school is in the same position as a lot of small schools in Kansas. Um, our enrollment is smaller than it was 10 years ago but it has leveled off and you can kind of see what the future looks like and that's our new reality. You could have a change in government and they could do something drastic and shut us down tomorrow or you could have a change in government and they could do something drastic and send us a bunch of money. You just don't know. But if I felt like the school was unsafe as far as job security, I would have to leave and find something else. I would like to say that we'll, we'll keep it level and we definitely don't want to lose people, but I don't necessarily see a gain in terms of population. Um, so what we have to do is we have to make our town a, a place that people want to come to and people want to stay. And so we've been doing a couple of things around town to really make that happen. But what we have to do is really establish that baseline of things. We have to keep a store, keep our schools, keep our um, public library and those sorts of things that keep people here, also bring people here, um, and just to kind of establish that um, small town feel. Despite less than stellar circumstances in the past and present, the Southeast community has been able to maintain a sense of uncertain optimism about its future, and this optimism may very well be rewarded. With the election of Laura Kelly as state governor in 2018, who championed a greater focus on funding public schools as part of her campaign platform, the budget issues may see a recess, or at least a temporary one. Either way, as long as the school exists, the small towns will stay strong. While some schoolless towns have managed to barely hang on over the years, towns that have a school to serve as a community center can thrive even with their small size. Given that the Southeast District has persisted for around 58 years at this point, it can readily be assumed that the people who care about their towns will find a way to keep it going as they always have.